Corey Haim, a golden retriever, and a lab-made creature monster. Obviously, I watched Watchers from 1988. Join me on this episode of 80 Days of 80s Horror. Slip into the shadows where horror lurks behind every corner. This is 80 Days of 80s Horror. Ready your nerves and let the darkness embrace you. Okay, so this is a revisit for me. I remember watching it as a kid and loving it. I'm not sure if it's the fact that it kind of has a werewolf vibe to it. Now, obviously, it's not a werewolf or a werewolf movie, so don't get it twisted. Um, but I really liked it. Now, I don't know. It could have possibly been because Corey Haim's relationship to the dog. I don't know. The problem was trying to find a copy of this to watch. I looked on eBay because I was just going to buy a DVD version or hope that they had a Blu-ray version. Couldn't find it anywhere, at least not any trustworthy sites. And then I tried streaming the film. Couldn't find it on streaming anywhere. I honestly thought Shudder would have had it, but no. Um, it wasn't until I looked for it on YouTube that I was able to find a full-length version of the film and watch it there. So, if you're trying to find this movie, check it out on YouTube. What's this film about, you ask? A lab explosion unleashes a telepathic monster and its linked canine companion. On the run and being pursued, the dog crosses paths with Travis, Corey Haim's character, who adopts the pet unaware of the lurking danger. Starring Sandy the dog as the lead dog character, which I really loved. Corey Haim, Barbara Williams, Michael Ironside, and Layla. All right, so on the gore scale, I'd have to say this movie was blood thirsty. They do have some blood and they have some visuals of people's eyes looking like they're ripped out. But to me, it wasn't very bloody. And I feel like with a creature monster movie, you could have went a little bit harder with the gore for sure. Fun fact. In the movie, the creature's predilection for tearing out people's eyes is never explained. In the novel... The creature does this because it believes it's ugly and doesn't want to be seen. Okay, so I don't know if it's my love for Corey Haim and the 80s or if it's just the nostalgia of watching this as a child, but I'm going to have to score this film a 5.5 out of 10. Although it does have its very dated feel to it, uh, I don't know if there's something I just really liked about this film. Smash or pass, you ask? I personally would say smash. With its serious tone, Michael Ironside's chilling villain, and Sandy the Dog's spot-on performance, the movie stands out as a solid thriller. Alright guys, thank you for watching this episode of Blood and Brews Back to the 80s. Remember, these are supposed to be quick and just to the point my preferences on my movie likings, so you guys can do whatever you guys want to do. But thank you again for watching, and have a very good night.